Hi, I'm Owen Wenger. I am a BAT team lead and API specialist here at Brixis. In this breakout, I'm going to highlight a few of the interesting changes in our native BRX and manage.NET APIs in BrixCAD version 23. There is not much to say about changes in build environment. Requirements remain unchanged since version 22. BRX still uses the V142 platform toolset from Visual Studio 2019. The .NET API is still based on .NET Framework 4.8. With that out of the way, let's look at API changes. As in every new release of BricsCAD, there are many fixes and improvements in our APIs. I encourage you to read through the release notes that we publish with every public release especially the Applications section, where we list API-related changes. By my count, there are almost 100 entries in the Applications section of the release notes for version 23, public release. I will only be able to cover the highlights, which I've broken into five broad topics. We have now, for several releases, been working on making our advanced 3D constraints and parametric blocks more accessible to end users and also to third party plugins. This is powerful technology that is not available on other open DWG platforms. So we see these APIs as a strategic advantage for you and by extension for us. On the .NET side, we settled in version 23 on moving existing classes to a new namespace called simply Parametric, so BricsCAD.Parametric. This namespace now contains all of our advanced Parametrics APIs, many renamed to synchronize with our messaging to end users through the application UI and documentation. Our IFC import-export reactors enable plugins to participate in the process of importing and exporting IFC format in various ways. In version 22, we addressed a limitation of the original Export Import Reactors API by introducing version 2 reactor classes side by side with the old classes. In version 23, those old classes have now been removed and replaced with the new classes. It is not a radical change, just adding a context argument to some of the virtual members. But it does require adjustment of older plugin code to the new function signatures. You may have heard before that it is difficult to gain much benefit from multi-threading in CAD applications. It is largely true for typical end-user interactions like running commands, interactive editing, opening dialogues, and so on. But there are specific use cases where parallel processing can be worth the runtime overhead. Brixis has always been proactive in taking advantage of multiple cores where possible. A quick look at the documentation for system variable MT flags shows some of the operations where BricsCAD does use multi-threading. In version 23, I counted 12 separate flag bits. You may not be aware, but when BricsCAD is performing these parallelized operations, your plugin code is often participating. I don't have time here to go into deep details, but let me illustrate one scenario. Consider a typical custom entity whose world draw is called during multi-threaded regen. Now, unless the custom entity has been designed and properly implemented to obey all the rules of thread safety, BricsCAD can't just call the entity's world draw simultaneously from multiple threads, or bad things will happen. To prevent such bad things, BricsCAD employs an opt-in system BricsCAD asks the entity whether it supports multi-threaded regen. If the ent entity answers yes, 
its world draw will be called without limitations. If the entity answers no, world draw calls for the entity will be synchronized to ensure only one call at a time. An opt-in approach is necessary for custom entity classes, especially for compatibility with our less capable Big Brother API. It has long been possible for an entity to say yes in BRX by setting a custom RX class flag. But the way to do it is not easy to discover and not well documented. The default behavior for custom entity classes is to say no, that is, to opt out of multi-threaded processing. I just want to stress that support for multi-threaded parallel execution in your code is not something you can support by just flipping a flag. Multi-threaded support requires deep understanding and careful design. But if you have done that, BRX will enable your custom entities to opt in to parallel processing operations. What is really new in version 23 is that we now support not only per class opt-in, but per instance multi-threading support for draw operations through the overridable sub-regen support flags function. The same mechanism is supported for draw overrules, both native and managed, except that for overrules, it is an opt-out mechanism, meaning that multi-threaded operations are enabled by default in drawable overrules. There are two new commands added to our c -sharp API sample that demonstrate the opt-out mechanism for drawable overrules. The commands are SAMP61 and SAMP62, both commands just add and remove a drawable overrule. Let me demonstrate. So here on the screen, I am looking at two very simple overrules. The first thread ID color draw overrule. Overrules world draw for all entities and simply sets a color based on the current thread ID. So we would expect entities to be drawn in different colors from different threads. And the second overrule is called force single threaded draw overrule. It simply overrides regen support flags, returns none, meaning opt out of all multi-threaded draw operations. There are two commands, as I mentioned, SAMP61 and SAMP62, all they do is toggle the overrules, enable or disable. So I'm going to jump into BricsCAD here. And I've prepared a drawing. It's just circles and lines, native circles, native lines in a polar array. And you will see that if I load the sample, and by the way, if you're not familiar with our API samples, I hope you will look at them. The C sharp sample that I've loaded here has a nice panel that lists all the samples it contains. And if you are not familiar with .NET managed code, I can tell you it's very easy to build this. You simply open the solution in Visual Studio, press build, out comes the DLL. You can drag and drop the DLL into BricsCAD and it will show you this panel where you can easily choose some of the samples. In this case, I will first enable the draw color overrule and let me show you what happens if I regen at this point. So you can see every time I regen, it looks like about three or four threads are drawing all of those lines and circles. 
And each time I regen, it's obviously different threads drawing different instances. And this would be expected in a multi-thread world. Now, if I turn off MT flags, actually I will open it in the settings window. For those of you not familiar, it will show a description of each flag. I'm going to turn off bit one to disable multi-threaded regen. And now you can see no more multi-threaded regen. Let me turn bit one back on. And it's back. Now I'm going to enable the second overrule. Remember this overrule tells all entities to opt out of multi-threaded regen. Let's see what happens. And as expected. Now you will notice that it's a different thread this time, but it's all the same thread. And I will turn these back off by running the command again. Again, multi-threaded regen and turn this one off, we should be back to normal colored entities. That's it. Finally, and still on the topic of multi-threading support, version 23 also introduces both native and managed classes to enable some special cases where your own plugin code wants to use ACES solid modeling APIs from worker threads. The ACES libraries can be used this way, but they have a requirement to perform certain initialization on each thread before the thread calls any ACES API functions. The new classes that we've introduced in version 23 facilitate this thread initialization and symmetric uninitialization. For example, one of our partners is using parallel for each in .NET to create hundreds of non-database resident solid 3D entities in parallel. The modeler lock class makes this possible. We are continuing in version 23 to extend and improve our API support for geolocation, mapping, and geographic coordinate transformation. A lot of this work started in version 22 and it continues in version 23. We see the civil and mapping market as an important focus area for us, so you can expect more to come in this space. ARX source compatibility has historically been a bedrock principle of our BRX and .NET APIs. Version 23 contains a bunch of fixes and improvements along with new function signatures there are too many to list here. On the subject of ARX compatibility, I just want to take this opportunity to talk about multi-mode grips. Multi-mode grips, for those of you who don't know, are custom entity grips that display a context menu when clicked or hovered. ARX has a special API for implementing these special types of grips. We have not implemented that ARX API in BRX. And the reason we have not implemented that API is simply because we think there is a better way. Actually, two better ways. First of all, you don't need a special API for displaying a context menu. In fact, the special API in ARX actually gets in the way by imposing needless restrictions. And to address this, our c -sharp API sample demonstrates how easy it is to implement the equivalent of a multi-mode grip without any special API. So that's the first way. The second way is to use the features of our unique quad cursor. The quad can often perform 
the same functions as a multi-mode grid, more easily and efficiently, and with fewer clicks. And the quad user experience can be extended in several different ways by plugin code. I'd like to mention just a few more items of interest in version 23. Every BricsCAD installation includes a collection of API samples installed in the API subfolder. These samples have been updated in version 23 to demonstrate many of the new and changed APIs. We've made some improvements to the Blockify API, which exposes this very powerful and popular functionality to plugins. We added a new Bill of Materials API and you can see a hint of things to come in the tiga.aec namespace. And there's more. Fibers are a form of lightweight threads that BricsCAD uses internally to separate execution contexts of its various subsystems. Microsoft's .NET Common Language Runtime does not play well with fibers. And this has become a pain point for .NET plugin developers. We've been working for a while now to eliminate fibers from our architecture. We are not quite there yet, but I'm happy to announce we have made substantial progress, enough progress that we were able to include an experimental fiberless mode in version 23. I want to caution you that fiberless mode is not yet safe for end users. We think it can already benefit .NET plugin developers, especially for debugging UI code, for example. Although fiberless mode is not documented and not supported, we do want to hear from you if you encounter any problems while using fiberless mode in version 23. Before I end, I want to encourage you to check out the Fireside Chat to hear more about our platform program here at Brixis and where we are going in the future. And learn about all the new list goodies in version 23. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. I have summarized the new API features and changes in version 23. I just remind you again to always read those release notes that we include in each update. As always, I encourage you to submit support requests if you have any questions or encounter any problems. Again, thank you all for your partnership and for supporting the BricsCAD platform.